Well, somebody who is not using the Ignite program. They're using the G League in a way that I had not really seen before. It's Lance Stevenson. And this is, uh, I saw he was drafted here when I was preparing to kind of start keeping up with this, and I knew I was doing the show. I was like, Lance Stevenson and Brandon Knight, these are guys that I grew up watching, and I've seen them you know, play a lot of the 2010s. And to see him drafted, I was like, wow, that's a... That's it. I just hadn't really seen it like that before. But it's cool to watch him come in and play. Uh, not going to get to the interview quite yet, but did seem really happy to have this opportunity. And he's even showed it on the court because he's playing great so far. Yeah, I mean, he's he's shooting right. He's playing right. I mean, he's only playing 32 minutes, so pretty good amount of minutes, only shooting about 18 points. But he's shooting 46% and 38 from three-point range. And he's getting a whopping seven rebounds. So I think he's doing what a veteran does. And most of the things that you're – you can't see he's doing and that is preparing these guys that are trying to make it to where he's already been uh he and he talks about in this interview that we're going to show here shortly but he makes impact in ways that most people don't see one we know about his energy and just the antics and he talks about his antics coming up here in the interview too <laughs> haven't seen a ton of you know the antics we saw in the nba but we see his energy helping this team and his veteran leadership yeah, I've only seen one antic so far, and it wasn't even really an antic. It's just Lance Stevenson. It was, uh, I think he was running down the court. Somebody just lightly bumped into him, and he fell away. That's just Lance Stevenson. Though. That's what he does. That's, that's part of who he is. I kind of wanted to ask him when we were talking, like, do you plan to keep doing that? But you know, apparently he does. That's, that's just all part of it. But how about the humility of this guy? Because this is somebody who was on a Pacers team in 2013, 2014. That was competing for a championship. You're competing against LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, and you stay on the Pacers with Paul George a good couple of years after that around that time might have been like their second or third player so to be able to go from a highly competitive situation and a, a really good player in the nba to kind of restarting a little bit and having a great attitude about it that's just uh that, that's one of the things that really stood out as we talked to him yeah we're talking about people like serge Ibaka coming down um but he's not coming down he's playing for what seems to be a season you know hopefully he gets a call up here but he's dedicating to say i am playing this season in the g league I'm not just coming down for a second. So the humility it takes to do that, to say, you know what, this is where I'm at. I'm just trying to get some reps in. This is what I need as a basketball player. And he talks about just how much he loves the game. Um, I think that's something I didn't expect for him. Just because we've seen his antics, you don't think about the person these players are half the time because you don't know them. You don't have an insight. And in this interview, you're going to see, uh, we definitely got an insight as to why that he has this humbleness about him. Um, and it's definitely notched him up a few levels on my favorite player list. Yeah, absolutely. The interview does remind you that uh, yeah, you don't really know these guys because talking to him, it was a completely different Lance than we see on the floor. And I, I don't really don't want to start stepping on the points that he said. So we're just going to go ahead and run it because he, he did say a lot. He was a fun interview. All right, take three. We are back here on the Weekly G, and we are interviewing a player that many of you are sure to know. This is Lance Stevenson. Uh, appreciate you coming through and doing this. And, you know, this is a, this is a bit of, of a different one because I've been watching you play for around, you know, nine or ten seasons. And then I see that you're ended up into the G, in the uh, G League draft. So I'm kind of wondering, like, what is the decision to go to the G League instead of, you know, playing overseas? Because you did do a year overseas, and looks like last year might have been a gap year. So what kind of went into that decision? Um, You know, um. I haven't been playing basketball and, and you know, when you don't play organized basketball in a while, you, you tend to lose that feel for the game. And um, I just feel like the G League was a great opportunity, especially to help the younger guys, guys coming up and to get, get back in that game shape. So, I mean, this is going to be a, this is a great experience and um, I'm just happy to be here, happy to be playing, happy to, to be again coach, happy to travel again, and just um, happy to play. So this is this is great, and I'm just happy I um, got this opportunity. There's been a lot of fan response to you coming into the G League, and a lot of it on Twitter, at least, has said it's weird seeing you in the G League. <laughs> it's just weird. Yeah. But for you being there, how does it feel as the person actually going through this? Oh, man, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, I love the game. I'll play anywhere, so... It don't matter where I'm at, where I'm playing at, if it's NBA, overseas, G League, it doesn't matter. I love the game and I love being out there, helping guys, helping my teammates win, being coached and uh, just having fun. You know, I've been on the couch in the house practicing and uh, just training for about a year and a half, almost two years now. 
and I was just so bored. I'm like, man, I want to get out there and play, man. I, <laughs> and I, I'm just happy to be out there and uh, the coaches and everybody in the NBA get to see me out there playing because they ain't seen me in a while. So because I've seen you on the screen for so long, I, I was doing a little bit of research last night. I'm like, wow, he's, he's only 31. I didn't really realize that. It's been a minute. <laughs> um, but you mentioned talking about a little bit of the younger players. So in this, in your role in the G, are you a mentor to some of those teammates right now? And I'm also wondering, what would you want NBA teams to know right now that you can still contribute if they do decide to pick you back up at some point throughout the season? Um, the young guys, man, they've been doing really good. Um, you know, they, they're willing to learn. Um, especially coming from a guy like me and I've been in, in the NBA for a while. So when I tell them something, they, they take it like, man, this is real. So, I mean, just being there to, to be helpful for them and tell them, the, showing them the ropes, how to, how to play basketball, not to use too much speed, use stop and go, knowing when to be out on the defensive end, um, learning how to uh, run the plays, not rush it. And it just, every day, the, my teammates is getting better every day. And what was the other question? Oh, yeah, I was just wondering, like, what would you want an NBA team to know that you can still contribute to them right now if they are oh, man, looking to pick you, you know, up this season? Whatever whatever a coach you need for me, you know, I'm willing to do. Uh, if you need spot-up shooting, you need defense, you need a guy to, to help the young guys, you need a guy that, you know, control them the point guard, know where to put, put the, put your guys in the right place. You know, I'm willing to do whatever. So, you know, um, I'm blessed uh, to be such a talent to, to, to do anything on the floor to help the team. So I'm willing to do whatever. You've been a very physical guard ever since you've been in the league. How does that translate into the G league? And do you feel like you have to reinvent yourself in some ways to get back? Oh, definitely. Uh, I definitely have to reinvent myself. Um, you know, it's just to have this opportunity to reinvent yourself and have a chance to get out there and show everyone a different side of you, a different uh, change in you, how you became a better person. So, I mean, it's always good. This is a great opportunity, you know, just being here and, and playing basketball again. Watching you in the NBA throughout the years, one of the things that would stick out to fans, aside from what you're actually doing on the court, is – you, you took on kind of that pest role, maybe getting into some of the players' heads. And I always kind of wondered, like, where did that come from? Where did you develop that, you know, throughout your playing career? You know, maybe when you were, like, guarding LeBron or, you know, I remember there was an incident against the Raptors. There's always something funny going on. It's like <laughs> trying to, you know, maybe get into the head of the opponent a little bit. You know, I just love winning. Um, I do whatever it takes to win. I love having fun winning. And, you know, when you're playing against tough guys where – you got to show them everything that you, whatever it takes to win a game. You know, you got to bring some stuff out that people never seen before. And, you know, I love, I love to be that person to, to get under somebody and show them, man, I, I love this game and I do whatever it takes. So, that, I mean, that defensive edge that I have, I think it comes from being from New York. Being from New York, that's what, that's what it takes to get on the court. And, you can't be you can't be a little soft coming on that court. <laughs> you mentioned that you've grown as a person. What does that mean for Lance? Um, just um, you know, a lot of people got that that negative look on me, and I just wanted to change that narrative. Um, I just want to show people a different side of me. I just want to win, and I'm just very passionate about basketball, and I'm doing whatever it takes to win. And people get tend to take that to a wrong perspective. And I'm just trying to show a different side of me and show them that I just love this game. Having been around the NBA for around nine or 10 years, is there a time in your career that you cherish the most or a location that you played that you cherish the most? Or does it just all kind of play um, together? I had great experience everywhere I played, but you know, of course, um, in the end it was, my favorite of all time, you know, just that team overall, that team that I was on, it was just like a, a unit. And I, and I never got that, that team like that again. So, you know, my coach, uh, Frank Vogel said, yo, you better cherish this because you, we never, we never, <laughs> we might not ever get to see this type of experience again. And he wasn't lying. That's really interesting. And I, I <laughs> bet it that you would say that answer. You know, the NBA seems to be trending younger. 
31 is not old by any means. Really, it's your prime. But it seems to be trending younger and they're willing to forego guys that are proven, tried and true for those that are younger and could be franchise players potentially. Um, yeah. So for you getting back to the league, do you feel like age is a factor for you? Um, I think age is a little, but, you know, there's a lot of guys that's in the league right now that's doing very good, that's older. And I just feel like um, – they're going young to develop uh, young players, and I, you can't you can't do nothing about that. I mean, I'm very experienced. Uh, I can come in and help a team whenever they need. Um, and you know what you're gonna get when you uh, pick an experienced guy. So, I mean, it's always good to go young, but it's also good to to mess with a, a veteran too. <laughs> Man, I would love to ask you 100 more questions, but don't want to take up your whole day. So I'm going to get to the last one here. Um, the, the gap between NBA players and others, it's, it's very clear whenever you see it, like in another league or you know even the G, you came in and killed on that first game. And I've always been kind of wondering, do you think that players like yourself are, are capable of those scoring loads in the NBA given the right role? Or is it really just that much easier to, to score in a different league? Because I also saw in China, you were like 26 points a game. That's, that's almost at 30. But we see everybody in the NBA can play clearly. So you think it's yeah. a role thing? Yeah, it's all about um, knowing how to play, to be the best player in, in, in your role. You know, some teams don't need you to score every point because they got a good score. Some teams just need you to hit corner shots or space the floor or play defense or just just be a guy that's, that can um, fill in the space. So I feel like um, in order to stay in the league, you got to learn, a, you got to find a role that every team needs. And, you know, everybody needs a, a guy that can fend. Everybody needs a guy that can be an open three-point shooter. Everybody needs a guy that knows the game. So um, it's all about learning a role as quickly as possible and being that guy that can do that with any team. Man. Every team needs you. All right. Well, that, that was great. Uh, we appreciate you for coming on, Lance. Good luck with whatever happens in the G this year and, uh, you know, the rest of your, bas rest of your basketball journey because you definitely got plenty of time left. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Nice meeting, meeting you guys.